This video will show you how a CVD works and how to upgrade it with performance part starting with removing the CVD cover and explaining the functionality of the variator and clutch. I will also show you how to replace your belt. After showing the functionality, I will show you a step-by-step -step on making your modification with performance parts. I will explain the specific components of a CVD transmission, rollers, torque spring, and clutch spring. CVD stands for Continuous Variable Transmission. By changing the rollers, torque spring, and clutch spring, you will be able to adapt your CVD and make it work better for your needs. Let's start with the beginning. In my case, I put the engine on a table so it make it easier to record. In your case, you'll have to remove your exhaust first. So you will have two nuts right here under the head and you'll get one bolt here. So here's all the bolts. They're all around. Uh, they're M8 bolt. So just remove them. So now you'll have two type of case. Uh, this one's got the internal reverse and also come in the back right here. You will get a bearing that actually support your shaft. The older version of this engine do not have that bearing and support. So now you have to pull it straight. Otherwise you won't be able to take it out. So now if I just put this one right here, as you can see, right there at the end, you have a bearing and you will also have one of those O-ring that you'll have to put back right here uh, before you put your case back. So let's put that aside. So now here you have all your bolts. On this version of engine, all the bolts are all the same length. If you do have the older version of that engine, all the bolts, well, actually you have two size of bolts. So make sure you remember where those bolts goes. Otherwise you might have trouble to type them up. Here's the basic of the CVT. So this engine, depending on where you look on the internet at 7,500 RPM, it will produce nine horsepower. So now the engine will spin your variator here. And as you give it gas, the clutch will engage here in the back and it will start moving your machine. So on the back right here, you have some rollers. And as the engine revs up, it will push those two plates here together. So you will go in higher gear and lower gear as you go slower. And the opposite will happen in the back. When this one goes up, this one will go down and give you actually more speed. It's the same basic as a bicycle. If you ever drive one of those 18 gear bicycle, you have three plate in the front and you'll have six in the back. As you change your speed, smaller you are in the front one, easier will be to move the machine uphill. But on the other side, as you gain some speed, you want this belt to go higher so you gain your speed and this one goes down. In the back, when this, when those two pulley goes away, there's a spring right here in the back that kind of give it a tension. You will have different tension spring uh, like this one is the basic one, but if you go with performance part, you will get uh, 1000 RPM, 1500 RPM, 2000 RPM. And that's what will actually give easier to those plates to split or actually harder to go 
away. On the other side, when you will downshift, let's say you remove your foot from the gas, harder your spring will be here, easier it will be to push it back where it was. If you get those 1000 RPM, the weaker spring, it will just take a little bit longer. On the other side too, uh, right here on your clutch, you've got some, you've got three arms with some spring too. So that will tell you when the clutch engage. Same thing again, 1000 RPM, 1500 RPM, 2000 RPM. So now you will select when you want your clutch to engage. Now to make it a little bit clearer, uh, what I will do is I will actually remove the variator and the clutch so we will be able to see what's happening inside. So now I've got this tool right here, who's actually used to lock the variator. Just to make your life easier, you'll put those two pin in, put your bolt to put some tension on it so it's not coming out. And I'll just take a regular wrench who's actually 17 mil and put some pressure on it and I'll get this one just cracked up and I'll do the same thing for the clutch. So now for the clutch, you just put your tool right here, squeeze it so the tool don't come out. And just remove your nuts. So now the first thing you will do is to remove this one here. Get it all out. And you have that big fat washer. So you're gonna put that aside. The next step will be to remove this one. This one too here come with a washer. Now you can remove your clutch. And if you slide this one slowly, everything will come out. As you can see, your belt is sitting in. So when you, you reinstall your belt, make sure that your belt is sitting in because it will make it easier for you to put it around. So now let's take the variator out. And that one is a common mistake that people do. So in the back right here, you have a plate. So now as the engine rev up, the rollers are pushing right here and we'll actually put those two apart. So your belt is riding up on the pulley or down, depending on the RPM of your machine. Right here in the back, if I remove this plate, there's the regular roller you come, the variator come with. And now as it spin, those roller just goes up the ramp and push your plate at the same time. So now as you change your belt, you'll have to inspect those roller right here. You want to make sure they're perfectly round Otherwise, if you have some flat spot on it, it will actually destroy your belt way faster. So that's one thing. The next thing, as you, re as you re put it back together, so now I'll put it back together. So I'll make sure all my rollers are sitting perfectly in the ramp. Now for the people that actually start their machine and say, I'm starting in higher gear, it's because your rollers are not perfectly set. You force it in, so your belt is riding higher on your pulley and that's why you have problem with the acceleration because you start in higher gear and after that everything is jammed up. So now make sure your rollers are sitting perfectly. The rollers are perfectly round and we'll put this right back in. Hold it together. Put your pin back in. Clean everything to make sure you don't have any debris. This engine is perfectly like brand new. It's just been riding one time just for a test. So now I'll hold that together and put it back slowly. 
in it, make sure my rollers are fine, and keep it sit right here. Now for your rear clutch. As you can see, there's a spring here. So now this clutch is pushing those two pulley together, but with the spring. And right here on the behind that we can see right now, but later in the video, I'll show you some performance parts. So you will be able to see it and I will actually put a clutch together. So right here in the back, there's a little spring there, there and there. And that's what will make your clutch engage faster or slower with the 1000 RPM, 1500 RPM or 2000 RPM. So if you go with 2000 RPM, that means your engine will rev higher before your clutch engage. But if you go with 1000 RPM, it will engage faster. So now it will depend on what people like, but we'll see that later in the video. So now the only thing I have to do is to push that belt in. Who's usually pretty interesting. So you squeeze your belt in this way and you will slide your clutch right back in and you'll make sure that you clear this pin right there. Put your belt back on. Washer first. Now I'll just secure my clutch in the back. Now, if your rollers are not sitting perfectly, that's where, where your belt, you'll have problem because those two plates won't be, the, the back plate and the first part of the pulley won't sit properly and it will push your belt. So now as you put the variator fan, there's little groove in it, spline. And I'll line it up with those spline right here. Make sure I push it all the way and you will see those spline right here. So if you're sitting right here and you can see the spline from the shaft, that means you're at the right place. If you're too far away, that means your roller might have just slide in the back. So now I'll tie that one and I'll redo the exact same thing as I did to lock it back. But this time I'll use my torque wrench that I'll put at uh, 40 pound according to the manual. And I'll come right here in the back and do the same thing. Lock it here. Take my torque wrench. So I'm at 40 pounds here, which should be enough. And I'll do the same thing with this one. I'll just rotate it. Put my magic tool in right there. So now I'm at 40 pounds. So I'll remove my tool. So this tool right here, I'll leave the link in the description. So if you need it, it just make it easier when you try to remove your variator and clutch. As some of you probably try it before, it's pretty hard to hold your clutch and remove the nut at the same time. Earlier in this video, I said that the engine at 7,500 RPM will produce nine horsepower. That will be constant. Well, depending on the setting of your engine, but let's keep that in mind that 7,500 RPM, you'll get nine horsepower. So now I also talk about an 18 speed bicycle. On the bicycle, you will be able to change your speed. So you'll change the three front spocket or the six in the back as you want. Unfortunately, in our case, now that everything is inside and there's no way for us to change the speed and say, well, I want higher gear or lower gear. So that is getting achieved with changing the roller and changing my clutch spring and the torque spring. 
So now if you want to go faster on the flat spot, you will put heavier roller and you will also put heavier spring in the, in the torque spring. And also you'll decide when your clutch engage. But all that is predefined. So if you want both side, you want to go climb a hill or you want to be on the flat, all those two will be different. So what you can do is to find the right spot to do be between the two. So you're still able to climb, but you will lose power. Well, not lose power, but you will not go as fast on a flat road or trail. So if you want a low speed machine that will climb, you can build your own setup for that. If you want to go on a flat trail and get more speed, you can also achieve that by changing your roller or your spring uh, and your machine will adapt to it. So now in my case, I know I drive my machine in the sand dune and I also have one trail that we do here and it's a, it's a flat trail. So now what I did is before I go for a drive, if I'm going in the sand dune, I will put lower weight roller and change my spring and adapt it to how I drive the machine. But now if I go on the flat trail all the way, well, I will put heavier roller here and adjust my spring at the same time. So now my machine will go in gear in higher gear faster and I will be able to go faster. If I was keeping the one that I've got from uh, the sand dune, well, I would not be able to go as fast because the roller won't push enough and my belt won't go enough high to get that speed. And that's maybe something you should do or you can also go in the middle. I will lose some speed, but I will still be able to climb. So now you, you've got the two extreme or you've got the middle that will actually be both sides will be good. One of the questions I've got a lot is what is the best configuration for your CVT? Well, it will depend on your driving. Uh, in my case, uh, I try to reach the maximum power of the engine at 7,500 RPM at nine horsepower. And I try to keep it there as much as possible because that's where the engine performed the best. So in your case, it might be different. Um, depend on your driving and it depend where you go. So I'll explain every single one, single one of the item one by one, and you will be able to understand a little bit more. Let's start with the variator. So the variator, the only thing you will be able to change is actually the variator itself like this one is a Cusso performance variator who's actually a little bit better than the one you have in your initial machine. So now you have some roller and that's what will actually roll right here in your ramp and change as the engine actually get the speed, the roller will roll and push this plate right here. So now those two will be sit right here in your machine and as the engine spin faster it will spread and push this one it will actually make your belt go higher on your variator so this is the example for the roller the one right here is a nine gram and this one here is 15. The only thing that will change in those two roller is actually the copper inside. This one is lighter, this one is heavier because you have more copper. So that's what will actually push your variator further or less depending on which one you select. And there's also slider. Slider will be different just a bit Instead of rolling, they will actually slide and this part right here will actually push right there on your faceplate. It was pretty hard to see right now. I'm sorry about that. But instead it just push. And instead of just getting 
one point of friction on your faceplate, it's actually flat right here, so you have a better engagement for your slide with the slider. Roller are a little bit easier to install, but for the slider, you want that flat spot right here to be on top of it. So now we'll just push those one in. All across. And depending on the weight you take, that's what will change your. So now as you can see, the slider is installed in and you have that little dip right here. So when I will put this plate right here, now you might, you won't see it probably, but right here, it perfectly fit with this one. So the slider will push and will push equally on that little plate right here. And that's what will engage your machine. Here's every part of your clutch, your rear clutch apart. So now you have your pulley, you have the principal clutch. In your clutch you have your spring, as I said earlier. Those ones are different spring. The blue one will be a thousand RPM. The yellow one will be 1500 RPM. The red one will be 2000 RPM. Your clutch bell. 1000 RPM, 1500 RPM, and again 2000 RPM. So now as your clutch, I'll put it this way, as your clutch go, this part spl split from this one. So now if I put this spring here, that's what's actually between the pulley and your clutch itself right here. So that's how much pressure you put on your pulley right here and that's what will engage and disengage and get your speed so the clutch as i just said and i'll take this one apart in a few minutes but the red spring that's where your three pad will actually go hit your clutch bell right here the clutch bell itself like this one's a performance one you have some hole in it so it keep it cooler and this one is also balanced, as you can see. So now it gives you better performance on your machine. So let's build one clutch and I'll be able to show you how to put it together. On the back of your clutch, you will get three pin right here that I already took apart, three pin that holds your plate. And this plate is holded with those little clip right here. Uh, the clips are pretty easy to remove. You can just push it with a screwdriver and after that just use a pick tool like this one just to pry it out. So after that you'll be able to remove your plate here and that's where your springs are. To remove your spring you can just pry it out right here and your spring will go out. You turn it like so and you just take it out the same thing apply let's say i'll put those one right here uh, as you can see this one here is shorter this one is longer the longer part goes on the side of the shoe and the shorter part goes on the side right here on the back of the the arm so now i'll just take this one right there and there pretty easy to install you just push it back in now you do your tree spring so now I switch my 2000 rpm spring for a thousand rpm so I just slide them in as I showed before you put the short part right here because you have a short and long part the short part goes here I flip the spring and I take my long nose just to pull the spring in and just make sure that they all sit perfectly. So the next step will be to put my plate back right here. And it might be rough to put in because it's really tight. Make sure that all 
trees are sitting perfectly as they do and I'll just put those clip back in now I can just use the long nose And there you go. So now your clutch would be functional and we'll jump to the next step. For the next step, I will assemble the clutch with the pulley and also the spring. So the way it works, I just put my spring right here. I'll sit my clutch on the top. It looks like that right now. I'll compress it. And at the end, I'll just put this nut right here and tied it. In my case I did a few clutch so now I just made myself a tool that I can just put the pulley, put the spring and the clutch and after that I just tied it, bring it down, line up my flat spot with the pulley but I'll show you how I use it. But this is something that you should be really careful because there's a lot of tension when you put the torque spring. So get yourself a setup. Uh, it will save you time and also money because if you put that nut crooked on that pulley, uh, it won't tight enough after and you might lose it. So take your time, do it right. Uh, get yourself something safe to put your spring in. So this is what it looks like from the beginning. So I have the pulley right here. I put my 1000 RPM spring and the clutch is right here on the top. Now that I've got the hole, I can see through and also line up the clutch with this part right here under to make sure that the flat spot will line up. So I'll just do that one out of video and I'll show it to you right from the top before I put the nut. This is what it looks like when you're, when you just do the two bolt together, you sit it and now you're free to actually put your nut. You don't have to put your foot like I've seen before and you're sure, and you can take your time to put your nut who's really important. So this nut right here is a 38 millimeter nut. Uh, I have it on my website if you want to purchase that right here, the socket, but you can probably find it too in any hardware store. There's special tool, so there's it's not something that they carry a lot, so if you have any problem, I have it on the website so you can buy it at the same time. So now the only thing I will do is just to type the nut out of video again and just remove my two nuts and get the clutch ready. So the way I do it is just for security. So try to make a certain setup that you won't hurt yourself as you do it because you might need your finger later or your face or any part of your body. So take your time, do it right, and I'll be back in a second. Well, this is the first video I do uh, on this one, on the, the, the clutch. I will also do another one that I would like to make some tests. So if you have some suggestion, on which test you would like to do or which test you want me to do. So I've got all the parts here so I can just kind of show people how to put it together again or just driving the machine so you will be able and I will be able to say yes that's a good combination or and no it's not. So let's do some tests on the next video. So I went through all the steps that you need to do uh, to upgrade your CVT. So now at the end, I just put the bell on. So now we have your clutch. I've got my new belt. I've got the variator. So the only thing I would have to do is just to remove that setup, all of it, it was the OEM one. And do the same thing as I show at the beginning of the video, just squeeze the belt in, put the nuts back, and I would be able to go drive. 
I put link in the description. So if you need your clutch and you want to configure your own clutch or do your own variator, uh, I put a setup for both of them on my website. So now you can select whatever configuration you want. So the link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, and share.